yeah, because of the success from Miscavige's perspective of how I handled the broker matter, he ordered me to do the same thing for the Las Vegas crowd, I guess what we, is what we called them. Terry Gamboa, who was the former ED, executive director, Author Services International, uh, Author Services, Inc., her husband, Fernando. Janice Grady, who was her sister, was Terry's sister, who was a messenger, who was a WDC member, watchdog community member at the Int base up till 89. Her husband, Paul, who was also an international manager, Grady, Paul Grady. And then ultimately, Mark Fisher joined them after he got slapped down by Miscavige and he left the church. He went and connected up with the with those people that I just listed, and they he joined their mortgage company. And there was a few other ex Sea Org members, but those were the most. I think those were the only ones that were from the international base. I think another guy showed up at one point, but Miscavige was intensely obsessed with that Las Vegas crowd. And this is about 1989, 1990. Yeah, yeah. And so we, I worked through again Linda Hamill and intelligence at OSA, and I think I'm not sure if Mike was involved because he was the public personal public relations officer at the time. I don't think he was over OSA at the time. I think I worked directly with Linda on it. And I told her, get with Ingram, because Ingram was very good at coming up with resources that were creative. And um, I said, you need a real creative. And I told, I basically gave her the pattern what needed to be done because, and I based it on what I had done with Broker up in San Luis Obispo without disclosing names and ranks and serial numbers. She got with Ingram to try to create the same thing in Las Vegas, and they came up with a guy named David Lee. This guy's used so many names, I don't even remember. I don't even know which one's the right one anymore. But he's gone by David Lee, David LeBeau, and an assortment of other names. But this was a guy that Ingram recruited to go become friends with that group of former Scientologists and base staff members in Las Vegas, and he got deep in and became a close friend, and he was reporting back. And quite frankly. The more reporting he did, the worse, you know, the more obsessed Miscavige became because those people all pinned their gripes about their experience in Scientology to their personal experience with Miscavige. And, you know, they were, you know, consistently communicating about how they were just waiting for this guy to burn out and maybe they'd even go back someday. So, of course, he would get that intelligence and then we'd, you know, become, become that more, he, Miscavige would become that more obsessed with more reports, want to know what's going on, what's happening in Vegas, you know, that sort of thing. So that became one of those line items like the broker one that you just never cut this one. It's going to happen. And that that went on for years. LeBeau late, remained there for years until a certain point where it became kind of apparent that the Vegas people had caught on to that this guy might not be straight. And he was sort of phased out. But before he phased out, he phased somebody else in.